Aloha, and welcome to Physical Therapy for a Better Life. I'm your host, Christine Linders, Physical Therapy Specialist. This lifestyle show is inspired by the past two years of changes during the pandemic. It's designed to bring you the best tips, strategies, and movements to help achieve less pain, improve performance, and have a better life, all from the comfort of your own home. Today, I'd like to welcome yoga instructor, personal trainer, and beach volleyball player, Laura Anderson, to teach us all how a simple morning routine can start our bodies off feeling great, feeling better before we even leave the home. Welcome, Laura, and thanks for coming on the show. Great. Hi, Chris. Thank you guys so much for having me today. Um, yeah, so thanks for that nice introduction. Um, <laughs> You know, I think it's so interesting because uh, I've been teaching yoga and do, being a personal trainer for about 10 years. And prior to that, I, um, I played beach volleyball. And, you know, um, it, it's been very interesting, my journey of movement and trying to understand how to, you know, we all want to look good. We all want to feel good. And everybody really needs, um, different routine, like a different routine for themselves in order to make that happen. Right. Yeah. Um, so I'm sure essentially if you're a professional athlete or just kind of, a you know, a, an average Joe that loves athletic things, you need a specific routine. Um, whether you are, you know, 20 years old, 30 years old, 40 years old, 50, 60, and it differentiates based on age. Mm -hmm. um, and I think one of the things that yoga brings to light is um, setting an intention for your movement, right? Um, now, realistically, we don't always have um, every day where we're going to go and do this 90 minute yoga class. I got to teach a lot of these types of classes um, in Los Angeles, California. Um, and in fact, I still, I, I teach now here in Hawaii. Um, and, you know, as, as you guys have mentioned, the pandemic has changed everyone's life. So we're all sort of looking for that um, routine or something where we can just get out of bed and feel better. So I think that's what Chris asked me to come on and sort of talk about. Yeah, um, that's that's so great. Everything you just said is so great. I love how people can hear that regardless of your age, regardless of your athletic prowess or dreams or your goals, there is something that suits everybody. So it's important for here, like some of my patients are super stiff and they just want to get up out of bed without pain or like my age range, like I get up okay, but I have pain throughout my day. And so as I move and do these little movements in the morning, all of a sudden I feel better and I have less pain or just, I feel good during the day. And then the 20 year old that's about to go for their 10 mile run and then go swim and bike and yoga and acrobatics and everything, there's going to be a different routine, right? For, for these people. But I love that. I love that you said the other day too, that you need to do the simple things first before you go into complex. And I wanted everyone to hear that there is something for you to do, whether you are, like you said, the average Joe who likes to work out, the person that's taking care of their new baby, the one that's sitting at home for eight hours a day, although we now they know they need to get up and move. There's something for everyone. So that just inspired me. Thank you for saying all that. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And I think it's, you know, I, I, as a, a yoga instructor or just a trainer, I, I get really sad when people are like, oh, I'm not good at yoga. Um, and really, you know, what it is, is first of all, I was that person 20 years ago. I thought, oh my gosh, I, I'm embarrassed for, I was an athlete, but when it came to yoga movements, I, you know, I was very shy. I didn't want anyone to see me doing that. But let's just, you know, as, um, as a physical therapist, you know, what, what needs, I think we're all striving for is to find um, movement patterns that allow for both stability and mobility in our body and to not really rely on a lot of equipment. Um, we obviously don't want to hurt ourselves. Um, but I just wanted to show a few tips I have because I notice even for myself, yes, I'm a very active person, but you know, not every day do I get up feeling great. So I thought, you know, what about just, um, what are some really nice, simple pre preparatory 
like morning movements that I really don't like to start my day without. So I thought I would maybe show a few of those um, for today. That sounds, that sounds great. I can't wait. Awesome. So um, one thing is, is, you know, if you are doing this from home, which I'm going to assume that most people are, you can actually see I'm here in a garage. <laughs> Don't be shy about the space that you need. You know, we all, people have dogs and kids utilize whatever space that you can do. Like I shut my garage so my dog doesn't attack me while I'm doing my movement and practice yeah. or kids crying or whatever it is. So maybe find just a nice quiet space. It doesn't have to be aesthetically beautiful, just a space where you can have a soft surface. So maybe it's just a carpet, whatever you need. Um, but if you're coming from laying down, then I'm going to actually recommend that you might start on all fours. And this is very progressive. Again, if you have sensitive knees, put blankets or pillows underneath your knees. You know, I just have a yoga mat here, but my knees are not super sensitive. And then the first um, movements I'm going to show, I call them diagonal hip rockers, but Chris might have a different name for them. And honestly, the names of things don't matter except to remind you. So I'm basically, just so that you can see, I have a mat space here and I'm going to walk my hands over towards, and I'm just going to move so the camera can still see me, over towards the left side. Now, I'm actually not going to tuck or arch. My spine is more neutral, so you might have to kind of pull your lower belly up, but you're going to rock your hips back and forward, mm -hmm. back and forward. Now, this is not about a number of reps or anything like that, but it's just essentially, maybe you tell yourself, okay, I'm going to do this five to 10 times, right? And the point of it is to move in a few different planes of movement. So it's not just forward and backward. It, there's a little sense of a diagonal movement to it. So you might feel a little bit of a side stretch, little shoulders, little hips. It's not over complicated. So then you would switch and do the other side. Um, and again, you can also add a little breath in. So an inhale when you shift forward, exhale when you shift back. So I'll just show you a few more on this side. And again, start nice and easy. I think, um, you know, one of the things that is not, uh, makes it really hard if you tell yourself, okay, I'm going to do a half an hour of yoga or I'm going to do an hour of this. No, tell yourself five minutes and then come to center. Now you can also add in um, literally just turning your hands back, you know, Honestly, we work on a computer a lot. Now, this might seem extreme because remember that I teach yoga, so I do stand on my hands quite a bit, but we're just going to do straight hip rockers and just rocking the hip gently back. Now, in this movement, I'm going to tell you what to avoid. I'd like you to not round your spine, okay? That, that's not wrong. It's not bad, but I want you to work on more of a neutral spine which is sort of just having the natural curve of your spine and you're just moving forward and back. So you'll get a little wrist, a little forearm and the hip. Okay, so let's say you did five of all of that. Then if you did wanna come and do a nice little cat cow, this is more of a movement a lot of people are familiar with. So when you inhale, you might soften the elbows a little bit, pull your shoulders back, pull your chest forward and up, and you're kind of sticking your butt gently in the air. Exhale, round your back, push the ground or the floor away from you, tuck your chin and scoop out through the belly. And then again, maybe you just tell yourself, I'm gonna do five little cat and cows. Inhaling when you're in the arch or this is the cow position. Exhaling to round. Now, if you do have things with hands or wrists, to be honest, this can actually be done on the forearm. So I'll just show you that as well. You can just put your forearms down, inhale, arch, and exhale to round. We'll just do two more of these. Now, Chris, are you, do you have any questions for me as I'm going here? I feel like I'm loosening up just watching you do that. I wish that I could do it in my setup right here. <laughs> I mean, that's the, that's the glorious thing. You honestly, just by some very simple moves, you'll, your spine and hips will start to open up your upper back. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to show another couple moves here. Now, the other thing too, is, um, I really recommend utilizing props and 
And honestly, buying all of the stuff is very cheap on Amazon. It's not, you know, this is not an expensive, I don't, it's not a $400 weight package that I'm asking anyone to buy or anything like that. But just some yoga blocks, they can be um, cork, this is cork, or they can be foam. And now this next, these next couple moves out. Now I would say, again, let's say we just, this is called a morning mobility routine. So you're going to um, step your left foot out to the left, and you might just put your forearm on your knee. And then I'd like you to kind of push your hips forward and rock. And this, this gets into the ankle, the hip, a little inner thigh. I'm kind of out to the side. You'd be shocked. I mean, there's a lot of moves that cover various different body parts and just kind of tuning into what your body needs. And then you're gonna stay leaned over, plant, this is my right hand down, but you'll plant your hand down and just do a nice little twist, opening up through the upper back and then sweep your left arm forward, bring it down to the inside. And again, I want you to keep your, this is my left hip. You're kind of pushing your hip forward and then you'll reach your right arm up and you can toggle between these two. So now I'm reaching the right arm forward, right hand comes down and turn and twist, reaching my left arm up, reach the left arm forward. And you can tell yourself, okay, I'm going to do five rotations here. So this is kind of hip and spine mobility. We worked a little bit of the ankle and the inner thigh, right? And I'm also just kind of suggesting this number because, you know, it's it gets overwhelming, right? It's it's overwhelming the number of things that we could do. And then obviously you switch and do the other side, right? So just so you can see me, I'm gonna give a, a little different view. Um, I've got my right leg out to the right. And again, I would pad up this knee, especially if your knee's more sensitive, put your forearm on your right knee and you're just gonna lean and rock. So the, the other thing too is as you're going, um, whatever it is that you are feeling, tune into that because so often, um, one, you might be feeling nothing, okay? <laughs> That's interesting. You want to, you do wanna feel that you're creating some space um, you're not seeking to feel pain, right? You know that, but you're seeking to, uh, you're trying to feel space right now. I want you to hold in there. These are also considered what I think Chris can help me out on this, but they're considered more dynamic in and out of movement. So dynamic rather than just stagnant holds. I've been, just been going through your routine. I've been writing down little notes uh, of the rocking that you're doing. And I, one of them was dynamic and the triplanar and the neutral. And I love that people can see like dynamic stretching helps you prepare for movement. It's a little bit easier on the body than a static hold. A lot of people hold that stretch and they're like, it hurts, it hurts. But when you, when you rock into it like that, you're easing into it and the muscle gets a chance to give and give and give. And I just, as you were doing that, I'm thinking this is beautiful because anybody that has had pain or stiffness, that rocking shows them like what you said, be in tune to what you feel and take note of that. And you move into it. If one side is, you feel some discomfort on one side, but the other side, you're like, wow, I can stretch all day on this side, but I'm going to ease into it. I'm going to rock into it. And it's three-dimensional. Like you're showing all these things that are three-dimensional. We don't move on one direction, you walk forward, that's one dimension. You turn to the right to grab something, that's another dimension. You bend over to get your purse, that's a third dimension. And so it's very important to prepare your joints and muscles in those three dimensions. I love what you're doing, Laura, this is great. <laughs> oh, good, I'm so glad. Um, so I'll just show a couple others and I think you brought up a really great point. So again, I'm using this, maybe you need blocks, maybe you don't, you can use any uh, props that you might have at home a chair, a couch, um, you know, books, things that we all have. Um, but I'm stepping my left foot to the outside of my left hand, and then I will lift my back knee and then just nice and simple. Um, really typically the upper back kind of rounds a little bit more. If you could try to elongate in the upper back, try to keep your arm just to the inside, kind of maybe your tricep to the inside of that left thigh. You could do some simple knee taps to stretch your hip flexor, but you'll kind of have to inch your stance back um, to feel that. So you could try that. 
And then if you want to make this even bigger, I, I really like the idea of blocks because you don't, you're not here to try and strain and stress, particularly in the morning, but you can put your right hand down and then twist open to the left. And then you'll sweep your left arm forward, bring your left hand to the inside of your left foot, spin the back foot down. So you're, you feel stable and grounded and then turn, open it up to the right and then sweep your right arm forward. So you're getting, you know, some side stretching, your hip is opening, right hand down, lift your back heel and come back to the twist. So I'm just gonna toggle between these, sweeping my left arm forward, left hand to the inside of my left thigh, spin and root the back heel down, reach your right arm up, sweep the right arm forward, and, you know, if you are a person that is more mobile, maybe you don't utilize the blocks, right? You just have your hands down. Um, but one thing that I will say is, you know, there's not really bad movements out there as much as there is, um, as Chris was mentioning, you have to be able to, in your day, move in all different directions. And unfortunately, sometimes, Athletic stuff can be harmful, um, not intentionally, but because an athletic endeavor, um, you know, you're utilizing whatever muscle you're just recruiting, whatever you can, as fast as you can, as hard as you can, and your body may or may not, um, it may or may not be healthy for your body, right? Um, but that's part of a sport. We're doing it to win, right? Now, yoga is very different. Um, so now I'm just stepping my right foot forward and you would just even yourself out. I can show you this without the blocks. Um, you're just lifting the back knee. You want to elongate through your stance and maybe just tap the back knee. Again, just tell yourself, okay, I'm going to do that for five times. I just chose five today, you know, and every day, maybe you have a little bit more time. So you're like, I'm going to try 10 of everything. Um, and as Chris said, again, it's in and out. Because long holds, particularly in the morning, to prepare for your day, aren't you really the, the best type of movements. And then you would keep your left hand down and maybe twisting, opening to the right, and then bringing your right hand to the inside, and then reaching to the left. So I'm going to go back to what I was speaking on before within yoga. One of the things I had to learn as a movement instructor I went through a lot, a lot of injuries um, from repetitive stress of doing the same things over and over again and only working in the same planes. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if Chris, you want to um, say something about that as well, but essentially learning movements that help prepare you in all different directions are really important. Like it's not about being good at yoga. Mm -hmm. You want to do yoga and movements so that you're good at your life. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I have to constantly remind people of that, including myself, <laughs> um, because oftentimes, especially if you're a little younger, sometimes you move with an ego. <laughs> I don't know if that makes any sense. Um, it but, does. I'll let, I'll let Chris uh, toggle off that one. So I'm just kind of showing this movement. It's, it's fairly simple, but I think it's going to be a real, it's essentially a very feel good kind of position. Well, I love, I love the rotation in that rotation plane that you're doing because all day long we do move predominantly to get somewhere forward and then you're moving they call that the um, I, we don't need to name names but the sagittal plane right and so right. rotation is like the transverse plane and then when you go left and right it's frontal plane and one of the most underutilized muscles as we age are the lateral hip muscles and i've told so many people you need that to give you stability and every movement that you do with that rotation will, like you said, ignite or turn on those gluteal muscles, those powerful ones, not the big one in the back that you would use when you bridge, but the ones that we, you would use when you sidestep or when you rotate. And so I had this idea for a book, like, you know, sidestep your way to no more hip and back pain, because a lot of people's gluteus medius gets weak as we age, because we actually are not 
strengthening it in any sort of a way. It's just functioning to stabilize us. And all the moves that you have done with the rotation and the dynamic will fire your glutes. And I think that that um, what do you call it? The cocky walk or the walk like you're confident. I had in my the book I didn't publish yet. It talks about like uh, walking like you're, um, you know, those confident people in the gym that walk with their knees locked, you know, they're hyperextending your knees. And I always say, like, I'm watching you bend your knee and move with such grace and softness that when you land with your knee locked, you don't set up the chain reaction below. So you don't actually get any of the leg muscles absorbing the shock. It goes straight to your spine because your spine's a coil. It's another shock absorber. And so having that non-cocky walk, that soft knee, that ginger walk allows the chain reaction to go in your body. And then your, your powerful legs absorb the shock. And then your spine, instead of your spine, your low back getting that shock. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, maybe I can show a, a couple more simple things. And again, don't be afraid to use props. This is something, you know, I, I've been in a lot of clients' homes and they're just so grateful that they had these props. And I'm so grateful. I actually wanted to invent bigger blocks because I literally felt that they are not tall enough for uh, various, they were not big enough for me when I first started my practice. Um, I really wanted to like, have a block that was this tall, yeah. but I'm going to show you guys, this is called a, a wide leg forward fold, but I am supported here. And to be honest, I'm not going to move my mat, but I'm going to show with my spine. So my spine is more, as Chris mentioned, this is more of a neutral in mm -hmm. my spine. And then as I move down, this is considered a forward fold, right? And I, I'm actually not a hyper mobile person, but I'm going to show a couple movements here again this is just a nice little morning mobility routine so you could sort of toggle this could turn into like i turn my toes out and i kind of stick my butt back so i'm doing a cow but i'm also stretching and working my inner thighs exhale you would go into a forward fold kind of almost like you're doing a cat inhale so these are very big and dynamic movements yeah. i'm not holding this is the cow with kind of a spider leg and that spider leg by the way for anyone that has back pain myself included i just went through a back pain crisis before i moved and uh, that spider leg is so opening to the hips that when you have back pain if you just do it the position laura's in right now with blocks with a bed with a table whatever you will open up your back and relieve the tension you will feel so much better absolutely and then I'll show, so that, that one again, tell yourself five to 10 reps, just kind of inhale and exhale. Um, another one in yoga, it's called Skandasana. And this was a nemesis for me for a very <laughs> long time. Um, but you would turn your feet slightly out and I'm going to show it in a various different ways. I would go to yoga classes and yoga teachers would just plop down into this move. And yeah. I'm like, whoa. That's impossible for me. Wow. Um, now I did continue to work on it. So I am quite low here, but what I'm going to show you is this is the same as what I just did for the majority of people. And it's not, you're not doing less <laughs> your muscles still doing what it can do, but the heel that is of the bent leg for this particular move is really important to keep the heel down so that you're getting the inner thigh stretch. So, you know, like I call it high skandasana. I'm still sticking my butt back and pressing my knee back. There's like a medium skandasana and a low skandasana, right? And then again, we're not looking for big holds here. So if you have blocks or any set of support, this is a great way to do it. And unfortunately, you know, we go into, um, you know, public yoga classes or public classes where we're comparing ourselves to other people, never do that. So again, this would be the low, yeah. medium, maybe even a higher, but I'm kind of sticking my butt back. And, you know, you can just kind of toggle between the two. It doesn't even have to be, we're not doing it for speed. We're not doing it for cardio. We're basically doing prepare, preparatory movements so that we feel good in our day. We feel good in our life. We're not trying to burn calories. We're not trying to, um, breathe really hard. We're, we're trying to be calm and, 
you know, tune into how our body's feeling. Uh, and I think I spoke on this a little earlier, but knowing your intention behind um, a movement practice is really helpful because sometimes we are out there trying to burn calories, right? And sometimes we are out there trying to build strength and, you know, endurance. Um, but then other times we're actually trying to, wait a minute, I want to be able to pick up my kids and feel good and, and uh, healthy in my spine and my hips and my legs. How do I, what, how do I get there? Um, and, you know, that's where physical therapists and such come in. Uh, but these are sort of just moves that will help you move around your day better and kind of awaken or enliven you. There's a lot of good points you made, and I hope people watch this over and over again. I like that you said, don't compare yourself to others. Like if you're in a class, like you showed the high version where you started and the low version that you ended up. A lot of messages there of practice makes perfect. If you have a goal, you need to take all those steps and be consistent to get there. I, I'm a dancer and my co-worker said to me yesterday, wow, you're so flexible. If I was that flexible, I would be so injured. But I was a dancer when I was younger and I didn't just stretch like that and be able to move like this. I've had to work on it and maintaining my flexibility through all of my injuries too. And one of the things that I used to say to people when they did yoga classes pre-pandemic was, hey, if you don't have time to go to a yoga class, go like once a month and find three stretches that you had a challenge doing from the left side to right side and go home and consistently work on those three moves until you become more symmetrical with your flexibility, you know? And, and any other point too, Laura, that I wanna mention, because we only have a couple minutes left is you mentioned the yoga blocks and the yoga mat. And we talked earlier about like a timer and earbuds. And I think nowadays finding calm and finding just time for yourself and self-care is great. So buying a yoga mat or buying some yoga blocks or buying, a timer that you can go shut the door in your room, in your garage, and have those five minutes or 10 minutes or what 30 minutes if you have it to do your routine, not somebody else's comparing to them, but your routine. And you move left to right and you breathe and you touch your knee down and go back and forth and you breathe and you do your neutral spine, all those wonderful moves in three dimensions that you showed us. I think it's important to invest a little bit. You said they're inexpensive. They're small. You can tuck them in a corner and then you can go have like your, your mobility routine, your time. I love that you talked about that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I'm happy to show, you know, one or two more moves. There's, you know, the thing about it is, is there's so many things that you can do since I am a yoga instructor. I can't help but show down dog. Please show us down dog. We have one minute. <laughs> okay, perfect. So you want to start with your hands actually in front of your shoulders, and then you would lift your hips up. Now, one thing that you won't hear often is it's okay to step your feet wide. It's okay for your heels to be very lifted. But what you're going to see is I'm just relaxing my head and my neck. My feet are nice and wide. I'm going to try to reach my heels down so that I get a stretch in my calf. Uh, essentially, However it is that you're doing a move, um, you know, there's going to be something stabilizing, something lengthening, hopefully something stretching, maybe something relaxing, but there'll, you know, there's going to be certain muscles, uh, you know, working. So um, what your purpose for doing them, let's say, you know, maybe I'm just, again, I'm trying to make it dynamic. So I'm going down dog to plank, but I'm keeping my spine neutral. I'm really... I'm actually more so mobilizing my shoulder, right? Because my shoulder is now overhead versus plank, which would be more, you know, just straight out. My wrists are being mobilized. My, my hips are lifting. My, I'm trying to reach my heels down. And, you know, there's just so many different ways that you can do different moves. There's not really right and wrong ways. It's what is the intention behind your purpose for, the movement in that moment, right? Yeah. Um, that is lovely. Oh my gosh, I'm so sad that we're out of time. We'll have to do this again. But thank you so much, Laura Anderson, for coming on and helping us with our morning mobility routine. And thank you to everyone for tuning in and to Think Tech Hawaii for allowing us to be here today. Remember, life is better when you listen to physical therapists. Aloha, everyone.